Howdy y'all, Dean Stilly here from the official home of unofficial Grateful Dead and Music News. Uh, reporting on Cornell 23, uh, Dead and Company at Barton Hall. Uh, I feel incredibly blessed to have been a part of this experience. Uh, what, what a great night we had last night. Just got home just now. So I'm uh, thinking about it as a kid. Uh, you know, 5877 was like one of the main ingredients to any Deadhead starter kit. So uh, you had friends that wanted to uh, know about the Grateful Dead or wanted to know something about Grateful Dead music. Uh, you spin them a tape of 5877. That was one of the main ingredients in the Deadhead starter kit. Uh, you give somebody one part 5877 and one part psychedelics, you got an individual that's willing to sell grilled cheese sandwiches and parking lots to support their dead habit. Uh, there's no doubt that happened to many throughout the years with good reason and so uh, to, to be in this room while this music was being created after having listened to 5877 thousands of times uh, since my youth, uh, this was an incredibly special uh, moment. Uh, unbelievable. It's, uh, I, I left my office yesterday at noon. I didn't have a ticket, uh, but I assumed I had enough karmic currency in the account to cover the cost. Uh, I sure was right. I got blessed ye uh, yesterday. I got blessed. Chris, thank you so much. Uh, not only did I get hooked up, uh, miracle for the show uh, as the patrons dinner as well, so I, I got... I got hooked up. I was very fortunate. So it all worked out. My buddy Brian went up there, got miracle too, got him for free. So there were people getting uh, miracled outside, and uh, it was wonderful to, to be a part of the whole thing. We start the show off, we get Minglewood. So they're starting it off like old times. Uh, Minglewood was very sluggish. I'm thinking, I hope we don't get another dumpster fire like what we had at Jazz Fest. And uh, it wasn't going to be the case. As the night went on, the music got progressively better. So Althea up next. I don't have the set list with me. Just got home. I think I should be able to do it okay. Uh, so off the top of my head, if I make a mistake, my apologies, but we should be able to get through this without much of a problem, particularly the second set. So uh, so there we go, Althea sounding good. I'm noticing uh, Mayer, he doesn't have the replica guitar. I don't get it. I don't get the replica guitar. I think maybe that's why Billy left. Billy saw the replica guitar and said, I'm out of here. Fuck this. A uh, guy's playing a replica guitar. So, <laughs> so I'm just kidding. Uh, that probably isn't the case. Uh, who knows? But uh, anyway, you're John fucking Mayer. Have Doug Irwin build you a guitar. It, it doesn't have to be a replica. I, I, I didn't get that. Anyway, he's not, he's not playing it. And uh, so the replica sounded good. I'd like to see Irwin build him a guitar. It just doesn't need to be a replica. Uh, so anyway, let's get on with it. Althea, a great job on Althea. And then we get estimated eyes. So here we go. This is when things start getting psychedelic. We start turning the corner on uh, creating a huge fire in eyes. Uh, Kaminti takes a solo. He's destroying it. That's kind of the spark that gets this fire lit. And it was spreading furiously through. Throughout the night, O'Teal he takes to the solo at the end of Eyes and just absolutely uh, kills it. Uh, unbelievable scatting while he's playing. He he was throwing everything he had at that. Uh, uh, that was an incredible experience. We were losing weight during that when we were dancing so hard. You get Jack Straw, I think, was up next. So uh, there you go. Jack Straw was okay. Uh, it's a good, uh, nothing incredibly crazy, but a good Jack Straw. It goes into Bertha. They still don't know how to end Bertha. It's not that hard. They should figure that shit out. So they just any more uh, until they were tired any more. And uh, as a good time, Cassidy we get next. Uh, I started heading towards the bathroom, wanted to beat the lines. Bathrooms were a little funky there. Sometimes you had to go outside and down the block to go to the bathroom. So whatever, I wanted to beat the lines as I got back in time for the deal that closed the set and the deal was outstanding. I mean, uh, uh, Mayer just, he, he kicked the whole band into high gear on that one. The whole procession went through the roof. Uh, they were so pleased after deal. They put down their instruments, gave, they gave themselves a standing ovation as they should have absolutely killed it to end the first set. 
So here we go. We got a love fest of a halftime. Everybody's thrilled that we're here in Barton Hall and uh, this small venue and it's loose in there. It's not oversold. Plenty of room to move around. There's a good vibes everywhere. Uh, uh, this is going to be a good time. They come out for the second set. China Cat outstanding. I mean right away there's this bouncing China Cat. It, it, it's got uh, an incredible psychedelic flavor and this thing is bouncing just right. And this this is going to be a happy time in Deadland. Uh, they start killing that uh, transition, take their time transitioning into the rider uh, with very thought provoking and uh, at times confusing jams. Uh, going into the rider, Weir didn't put the brakes on uh, the procession at all, really. He, he kind of let the thing fly all night. There were no pace issues throughout the night, other than mingle with everything else, really moved along as it should and uh, much better than expected. Ride are outstanding and then boom get them boom help slip Frank you get the help slip Frank so we're getting all the monster combos at once we get help slip Frank and uh, help on the way great the slip knot jams incredible just the right amount of confusion and power and uh, so, uh, at times uh, so pulling back and uh, being a little subdued before the attack and uh, this was just really really good stuff uh, throughout the night. The Franklins now, where it's a full hoedown when Franklin starts. Everybody, the, our best dance moves on display as always. This is a happy time in Deadland. Uh, drums and space up next. Uh, they were just fine. On the B, Mickey, he hit some low notes. That whole place was shaking. He, he, he was tearing it up on the beam. That was good times. Into space. Out of space, we get Scarlet Fire. I mean, you get all the monsters. All at one night, all in one place, all at one time. China Rider, Help Slip, Frank, Drum Space, Scarlet Fire. And just the right amount of everything. The kind of night that the music was playing, the band, there was magic all over it. And folks that I talked to that were watching the stream felt it at home. And so there's your evidence. If you had to be there for it to be good, it wasn't that good. If you were watching the stream of it and you think that's outstanding, it was outstanding. So there you go. You shouldn't have to be there to know that's some great music. Uh, so here we go. The Scarlet Fire, great. Then boom, you get the dew. And the dew was absolutely beautiful. Everybody that follows these things knows that's, uh, that's really what I was chasing my whole career I never wanted to miss a do that Garcia sang and uh, so he's not with us anymore but we get the do uh, the do was outstanding I thought it was absolutely beautiful well sung by Weir incredibly played by the band uh, uh, the jam at the end of it uh, blew the roof off the place, knocked the tears out of our eyes, rose up goosebumps on us. Uh, uh, the whole, the, the crescendo there, the do, it, you're experiencing it in a moment where it matters so much. It's so significant and it matters and that against the lyric of I guess it doesn't matter is the juxtaposition of the emotions, the emotion of how much it matters against the lyric about how it doesn't. Uh, that whole thing leaves you right in the middle in a puddle, in an emotional and spiritual kind of uh, it's a mess. I absolutely loved it. Uh, it picked me up. It tore me up. Then renewed me at the end. Uh, that's what it's all about. You get Terrapin as an encore. Wow. I mean, you got it all. That show has it all. I felt like I should just maybe retire after this one. Just say, you know what? I'm done. I'm not sure it can get better than that. Uh, it's like a one and done. So you're doing a long tour. You got to save all those big ones for, you know, uh, separate shows and different shows to get all of that together all in one night to me was outstanding. Uh, this one, uh, hard for me to find much to complain about. I I if this is the pace that they'll be playing throughout summer, it'll be a very good summer. Uh, so I don't know if it, it'll happen that way. I did miss Billy. Uh, I like Jay. I did miss Billy. Billy plays the drums kind of like Garcia plays the guitar. Billy's not really a timekeeper. He, he comp he, he kind of accentuates the music and he drags a little bit. It's, it's just his style is a lot like Garcia's style was on the guitar. He take, took that to the drum kit. And I miss some of that uh, tremendously. 
throughout the night. But uh, uh, Jay, great job. He got a lot of power in his punch. Strong dude. He hits it hard, and uh, he knows the music well. So uh, this should be a good time as the tour rolls on. Uh, we'll see what happens. I hope we get a lot more of the flavor that we got at Cornell because it was an extremely special night. I don't know if I'll be able to cover the, the West Coast swing in the summer. I don't know what I'll have time to cover, what I won't. I'll do my best to check in from time to time, but uh, so here you go. I love you all forever. It's good to be back and uh, good to be celebrating with all you guys. The party afterwards was uh, uh, almost as fun as the show. We, we were cracking up at the hotel, telling jokes and uh, chasing skunks out of this road and stuff like that. So, Alan, you funny man. So we had some laughs. It was a good time had by all. A time that will never be forgotten. Uh, Cornell 23 uh, was a roaster. I love you all forever. We'll see you soon.